Hello everyone, I'm Ben. Welcome back to Tech Block. I'm recording this on my normal camera again, normal microphone. Everything should be back to normal. The PC is not fixed yet, but I just got a package from Amazon. That's the new Kraken X52 cooler. In the previous video, I mentioned that I got the X62, which is a 280 mil cooler. I didn't. Uh, I actually got the X52, mainly because the PC case that I'm building in doesn't support a 280 millimeter radiator, only a 240, I think. And radiator mounting for the case is either on the top or the front here. So I picked up an NZXT Kraken X52 all-in-one liquid cooler, 240 millimeter cooler. And behind me, I have my old Corsair H100i V2 right here, which uh, unfortunately, I think the pump died or something's just gone horribly wrong with the cooler. I did post a story on my Instagram of, I believe it was the liquid cooler or the pump making some horrific noises before it stopped working completely, I guess. What I've done this morning is I kind of polished up my CPU. I, I removed all the thermal paste and stuff with some uh, Arctic Silver, uh, like thermal remover right here. And then we've got the purifier there as well. I'll leave a link in the description to this little kit that I have here. And yeah, I picked up a new cooler. We're gonna install that today. Fresh thermal paste, everything should be okay. Now I'm recording this on my camera. So the only way I'm going to be able to edit this video is on this PC. So if it doesn't work, I can't post this video but I don't want to record anything else on my iPhone ever again as the quality is not good. <laughs> Let's begin resurrecting this PC. Unbox the brand new cooler, of course. So where's my iconic red knife? We haven't replaced it just yet. I don't know when I'll be replacing it, but I did get a few comments saying like, keep the knife, it's iconic. So it's staying for now. It's a pretty small box that it came in really. I expected like a much bigger package, but I think the Corsair one came in a much bigger box. All right, so here it is and it's got some awesome RGB lighting. I can't wait to set all that up in NZXT's cam software. And a lot of people do say that NZXT's cam software is like awful. And from my experience at least, like it's not bad. Like I don't really use it very much. So I can't really say that their software is awful, but there are a lot of people that say that the cam software is goddamn garbage. But from my experience, it's not been too bad, I guess. I don't really recall anything being bad about the software myself, but you know, maybe I've just been lucky and nothing's crashed or anything or nothing's gone wrong whilst using the software. But anyway, here's the cooler. The plastic packaging is off. Let's open it up. Now I should really probably move my PC case so I can actually unbox it properly. So let's pick this dude up, move it on the floor for now. Uh, there you go. You, you can just sit there for now whilst we <laughs> unbox the brand new liquid cooler that will hopefully fix the problem that we're having where the CPU just overheats and hits 100 degrees, blue screens, you know, all that lovely stuff there. So let's flip this over, take it out. Okay, nothing else in the box. Right, we have two fans. I'm guessing these are NZXT, yeah, like standard air fans, non-RGB. We have the cooler in here. Well packaged by the looks of things. We've got some cables, oh, some mounting brackets. That'll be useful. <laughs> right, so I think we're gonna be powering it via like a SATA power connector. And then this will just go onto our motherboard so we can actually control the pump speed and stuff. Right, pretty straightforward stuff. Let's take the actual liquid cooler out. I hope the tubing is as nice as the tubing on the Corsair liquid cooler. Because the tubing on the Corsair one was genuinely like very, very good in my opinion. Uh, I think this one's quite a bit thinner, but it still looks all right. It still looks good. Take the actual radiator out of this packaging. Uh, it's got thermal paste pre-applied. Uh, I'm gonna leave this on for now until we actually go ahead and put that on. Hope this even supports my socket as my CPU and motherboard are a little bit outdated for, to for today's standards. All the screws have now fallen out. Okay, I thought they'd be packaged, but that's, <laughs> that's not true. Right, so we have, this looks like Intel. And then right here we have the AMD uh, mounting bracket for AMD motherboards, I suppose. But I'm on Intel for now. I will be switching to AMD soon though, I think. <laughs> You'll get to take a look at my beautiful cable management job for the back of this PC, which I think I did an all right job actually. I spent a couple hours last night, well, yesterday morning actually, uh, just kind of cable managing everything, making sure it all looks nice before we install the cooler. Just so I save a little bit of time today when actually recording the installation video and hopefully resurrecting my PC and making it work again. Uh, that's the end goal here, to uh, have a functioning PC again with a CPU that does not immediately overheat and hit 100 degrees. Right, let's install this bracket at the back of the motherboard here. Pretty simple, cool, that's in. Right, so let's take all these screws, 
screw them in here. I think this is what you have to do. I'll take the bottom plastic piece off. I'm guessing exposing the thermal paste. Yep. Am I the only one who hates installing liquid coolers or any kind of like coolers on CPUs? Because this is like really nerve wracking all the time, especially with like all in one liquid coolers. I've only installed my Corsair H100i a few times, but every single time it's been quite nerve wracking because of the tubes and like you watch the tubes bend and you're like, oh my God, please don't leak. <laughs> but so far I've never had a liquid cooler leak on me. I've only had one and I believe the pump died <laughs> for some strange reason. It just gave up one day. I'll peel this off, you know? It actually looks pretty dope. The NZXT logo is facing the correct way. And this entire block is like a mirror. Like I can see myself in it, it's pretty cool. But the PC build isn't actually fully done yet, even though it may look ready, I guess, it's not ready yet. Moment of truth now, let's go ahead and plug it all in. I'm not gonna put any side panels on. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm gonna probably put the front panel on and that's it because I just want the LED to be connected. Now I've already kind of booted the PC up before as it did boot up a few times into Windows and I saw all the RGB effects, I played around with them. But of course, because my pump had died on my liquid cooler, uh, the PC turned off immediately because the CPU was at like 100 degrees Celsius. So that wasn't really a, a good temperature for it to be at in the first place. Right, I've connected everything together. Uh, let's pop it over there. Plug in the power, plug in the monitors, and pray to Jesus that everything works and I don't have to buy a freaking new PC, dude. Help. I really hope this works. Genuinely. <laughs> this has caused like so much stress rebuilding this. And I just kind of want it to be over and done with, you know, I just want to get back to editing videos and stuff. What the hell is that? I guess this is what you call power cycling. I might try clearing the CMOS again. Reset the BIOS. But this is not good. What's especially weird is that if I try to unplug a bunch of USB devices, I'm almost certain that it might boot up. Maybe. See, look, I just unplugged a bunch of USB devices and now it's booting up. All right, let's try getting to BIOS. I don't know what's happening. It's just a black screen right now. <laughs> like everything's working fine. There's no, nothing popping up on the monitor. Oh, there's BIOS. It maybe just took a while. Let's see what the temperatures are. Cause that was a problem last time. Why the hell did it just, it just turned off. Oh dude. And now it's back on, okay. I just want to get into the BIOS really. There's BIOS. I'm pressing delete. Your PC needs to be repaired. What do you mean? No, I want UEFI <laughs> firmware settings. Get me out of here. Sir? A required device isn't connected or can't be accessed. Dude, I don't, I don't care. I just want to get into BIOS. I really don't understand like what's actually wrong with it. Like it doesn't make any sense. Okay. <sighs> what is this? Oh, I think I can go into BIOS. I pressed escape. I didn't think that'd work. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Are you gonna go into BIOS now? It is, we're in BIOS, cool. Uh, F2, let's go into, oh. The CPU temperature is now fine. Will it work? I, I don't know what this is so confusing. Like, I've had problems with my PC before. The temperature is now fine. All 16 gigs of RAM are detected. Um, okay, memory frequency settings. Uh, make, let's make sure they're running at the correct frequency there. Pray to Jesus that this works. The CPU temperature is fine. Will it boot up? I don't know. Will I have to reset the BIOS again? I don't know. Like, generally, when it boots up, the boot time is super quick. Like, there's no, there's no fussing around. Please wait. And I've not seen this message for a while. I've recently reinstalled Windows. Okay. Looks like Windows hasn't loaded correctly. Hmm. Have we fixed it? Oh, I can't use a mouse. So, 
<laughs> my mouse is not plugged in. Um, see advanced repair options. Continue. That sounds like a good repair to me. I mean, it should load up fine. I mean, I guess the last time I was in Windows, I think the CPU hit 100 degrees and it blue screened. So that's probably why it didn't load correctly there. But I think it's, oh, please, God, work. M, that should be good. It should be on like in the next second or two. Okay. All right, I like what I'm seeing. Apparently there's no internet. Are you kidding? I need a mouse. I'm gonna plug my mouse in. Everything's fine, I think. CPU temperature, 33 degrees. Very nice. Right, so apparently my prediction was correct. The pump or some components inside of this H100i V2 all-in-one liquid cooler from Corsair malfunctioned whilst building my PC. Oh, well, and by building my PC, I mean moving pretty much all the components to a different case and adding a new power supply and a few new fans. Somehow in the process of that, the CPU cooler just died and stopped working. Um, so, uh, goodbye Corsair and uh, hello NZXT. Would you just look at that, you know, all the RGB. And by the way, this PC build is not done yet. I'm still waiting for a few fans to arrive and then it'll be all done. So that's how it's currently looking right now. Quick little sneak peek of the build I guess. I guess it's kind of a good thing that we picked up a new CPU cooler as I'm sure we all can agree this one looks significantly nicer than the Corsair one at least in terms of like RGB-ness and stuff. It just looks pretty cool right? So I think I'm gonna be ending the video here. Thank you to everyone who left solutions and fixes for me in the comment section of my previous video where I first announced the fact that my PC was maybe dead but thank you to everyone who left suggestions and stuff trying to help me out fix this problem but in the end it was actually the cpu cooler so that's all good i'm glad i didn't just like randomly buy a liquid cooler for no reason uh but but turns out it was actually the problem so glad that's all fixed everything should return back to normal uh let's hope the pc doesn't break or any more components break this pump better not die nzxt don't let me down all right uh i, I love your products and uh, that one better stay alive for longer than Corsairs, all right? So thank you very much for watching again and goodbye.